Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Lady Freethinker's Activist in Action interview series. I'm Mina Jackal, founder of Lady Freethinker. We're a nonprofit media organization dedicated to exposing and stopping suffering of animals, humans, and the planet. We publish urgent news articles and petitions to promote the humane treatment of all species, and our petitions have collectively gained over 15 million signatures, directly saving animals' lives and putting important cruelty cases right in front of the eyes of decision makers. Today, we are excited to speak with Duncan McNair. He's a prominent corporate litigation lawyer and CEO of Save the Asian Elephants, or STAY. They're a nonprofit organization that works to end the terrible cruelty and brutal conditions suffered by Asian elephants. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the organization, um, Duncan, can you please explain what STAY's focus is and how you got involved in it? Yes, of course, Nina. Thanks very much, and thanks for having me on your on, on your great program. Um, I founded Save the Asian Elephants, or Stay, as we call it, in early 2015, after my first trip to India, where I uh, went to uh, really fathom out what I was hearing about the abuse of Asian elephants, and I was so shocked and horrified at what I saw. As soon as I returned to my hometown of London, I made inquiries and I felt that some of the charities who were doing great work didn't really follow the modus operandi that I thought could be really effective to alleviate the terrible suffering of this depleting number of Asian elephants, much loved throughout the world, but abused hideously for commercial exploitation, especially in tourism. So I went to see some of the charities. Um, they were doing good work, but some of it is really marginal. And I thought that it was necessary to found a different uh, organization with a different focus. And I put the word out to people of really huge influence and moment. And they were very responsive, and I'm so grateful. And so quite quickly, I built Save the Asian Elephants. Uh, we're a coalition of lawyers, politicians, campaigners, and field experts who have joined together uh, to, to, in, in one sentence to preserve and protect this ancient species of Asian elephants. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, you guys do great work. Um, and for those who aren't as familiar uh, with what is happening to the Asian elephants, um, can you share with us the various issues that, um, that they're dealing with, um, including their terrible commercial exploitation? Yes, of course. Well, Asian elephants now um, inhabit an ever smaller area and ever fewer numbers of range states in Southeast Asia. The great majority live in India, uh, and others are stretched out uh, further east uh, through Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, um, Bhutan, um, uh, um, Myanmar, and so on. But in all of those countries, uh, they are suffering hideously, and their numbers continue to diminish. It's a sad fact to think that in China, once, not so long ago, there were millions and millions of Asian elephants. Now there are barely 200. They've all been slaughtered. Uh, in the name of commercial exploitation. And that sad and tragic fact um, is true across the range states. Um, what happens is that, first of all, Asian elephants are under enormous pressure to yield ever more of their natural habitat to reckless uh, and brutal human expansion across their territories. They die through many causes, um, through the loss of their habitat by rail, uh, rail tracks going straight through the forest and killing tens at a time, uh, through electric cables thoughtlessly run through the forests that they touch with their trunks and die, um, and sadly through the uh, many causes including the commercial exploitation uh, through tourism, through festivals, uh, use in temples, and all sorts of itinerant begging uh, and, and thoughtless and brutal use. And um, perhaps the most grievous of all of this is the way that the Asian elephants are poached from the wild um, 
uh, for use in tourism. And I'll tell you um, about their life story uh, when that happens to them. I'd just add also that increasing numbers of Asian elephants, particularly in India, the home of about 75% of surviving cat wild and captive Asian elephants, um, is really awful because it's only the male of the Asian elephant species that has significant tusks of interest to poachers. As a result, disproportionately huge numbers of male uh, Asian elephants are killed for ivory poaching. And therefore, of course, when all the males go wither uh, the species, what hope does it have? There are sad areas of, of India where there are reckoned to be 200 females for every male. And so that augurs uh, drastically uh, for, their spe for their survival. Uh, many say that is the single most awful um, conservation issue um, for the species. Um, and, and there are other problems as well, which are, are, are legion, but Asian elephants forced out of the forests, which are ever depleting around them, uh, into agricultural areas, um, cause havoc to the crops and sometimes, sometimes uh, ramp, go, go on the rampage through villages when they're perhaps fearful or they're hungry and they come into contact with humans and we may re readily assume which comes out better of the elephants and the humans and this so-called human elephant conflict has tragic consequences also with the shooting of elephants and their poisoning very often uh, because they um, you know have destroyed crops and started to eat them and so on so I mean that's a very sad litany of the reasons why their numbers are depleting but alongside that is the horror for them of the, uh, of the torture through which they're put when they're snatched from the wild, usually very, very young, uh, very young elephants, far too young to leave their mothers, uh, to be brutalized uh, and brought uh, really to complete abject submission for use in all sorts of unnatural tourist uh, and commercial activities. Um, can you describe how those elephants are, are treated when they're taken for commercial exploitation? Well, it, it's really, really sad. And you know, I've been interested in animal welfare issues for decades. And this is as bad as anything, really, I've encountered. But um, uh, baby elephants are snatched from the wild in different ways. For example, pits are dug in the forest by uh, those taking them. Uh, the baby falls in. The herd all gather around, driven mad out of their minds with, with fear for, for, the, for the baby. They can't get it out. Um, that's one where they're taken. Um, another is that they are, they, are, they are covered in nets and dragged away or lassoed. Um, and they're taken away, uh, these babies, often quite small and very young, uh, absolutely reliant on their mothers in every way. Uh, they're taken away isolated, which is disastrous for a young elephant, um, placed in a wooden cage or a crawl, known as a crushing cage. Um, they are kept awake by massive noise for ages. Uh, they are um, starved and dehydrated. And then over several weeks and months, they are beaten ruthlessly with, with hammers, with wooden staves, uh, with, uh, stabbed with spikes, sometimes have fire applied to them. And the purpose of this horror, known as pojan, a Hindu word for the breaking of the spirits, is indeed to break their resolve and to wreck them psychologically. So they are completely uh, brought to uh, be absolutely terrified at all times. That's regularly reinforced um, with the awful weapons that are used against them uh, to jab into them, uh, to keep them fearful, so that they're easily led and easily used. And I'll just pause to show you a couple of awful instruments, if I could hold them up to you. This, I hope you can see it okay. Yes, is, yes, that's, is, that's is, terrible. Is known as a bull hook or an ankus. This is a real one that's been used on young and other elephants. And you can see it's got two fierce spikes on it. So this is used to, to rip the and tear the flesh of young elephants, to jab into them, often in their most sensitive parts, including around the eyes, 
between the shoulder blades, shoved hard up under their toenails and so on, um, and to rip them. Uh, this is a real one that actually had some blood on it uh, okay. when I was uh, sent it by a good friend, um, a very distinguished uh, and honest man in, in India who, who's been working with elephants. And, and this one here is a ceremonial version for use on, believe it or not, use on special occasions ah. uh, to torment and, and torture the elephants. So... Um, this process of pajan can go on for, as I've said, many weeks and months. At the end of it, the elephant, the baby, would not recognize its mother. It's lost all focus. It is just terrified, deeply psychologically damaged. And so it is kept in that condition throughout the rest of its life, a life that's greatly attenuated and shortened by reason of the, uh, of the horrors of being in captivity. Generally, captive elephants are ina wholly inadequately fed and watered. They're isolated very often, <clears throat> or near isolated. They're often tethered down very firmly, not just with ropes, but with wires that dig into them, uh, that don't expand as the elephant does uh, through generally growing, um, and are regularly uh, beaten and stabbed. And anyone really who wants to doubt that must go there for themselves uh, to see the state of the elephants um, in tourism, in the temples and in festivals. They are generally almost uniformly covered in injuries, in festering wounds. Um, it, they have all sorts of problems with their limbs and their backs um, and they're in a terrible state. Uh, it doesn't take long uh, in um, uh, observing elephants to see the difference between a healthy elephant in uh, the wild or in a genuine sanctuary, as distinct from an elephant that's been in captivity and human subjection for any period of time. It is dramatic and awful. And, and we, uh, we think it's part of our mission of it, uh, propounding what we're talking about to an ever bigger world audience to make people see these images. They should see them and understand what's happening to this ever depleting um, species. It's really important uh, because that is often the spur to people's action uh, to really take steps. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for explaining that. Um, I think it's very helpful for people to actually see the weapons used to harm the elephants. And um, thank you for raising so much awareness because you're right, it's so important for people to see what's going on and then we can speak out and, and do something to stop it. Um, mm -hmm. So we really appreciate what you're doing. And for my last question, I'd love to know what's in store for you and the organization moving forward. And also what's the best way for people to follow your work and your organization? <clears throat> okay. Well, what we do at Stay, uh, our purpose is to raise public awareness hugely. We do that online on our website, you can see here, stae.org. Also through the relentless use of social media. Social media is the single greatest friend the elephants could have uh, in their fight for survival. Um, and what we try to do is to exert influence in a proper and uh, appropriate way on government. We're working hard with the UK government and on the commercial travel industry to change their practices. They are complicit to a very great deal in this. We are seeing things changing, but we are seeking urgently to uh, firstly inculcate a culture of responsibility in those companies. They must be accountable for what they do. Sadly, in the UK, a long period of self-regulation has been quite futile. In other words, uh, these travel companies marking their own homework, are they deciding what's right and wrong? That must end. And happily, many companies are starting to align with our policies to drop all advertising and promotion of unethical sites, resorts, and practices. That's really very important. Um, and with huge public awareness, we must remember those millions who have signed our petition and aligned petitions, they are the paying customers of these travel companies. And so the travel companies must take note 
of the way think, uh, uh, awareness is now changing. Uh, and indeed, government must, because those signatories to our petitions, they are those who vote in and out governments. Um, and a particular policy we have is a new law we're pressing for to ban the, un the advertising and promotion of unethical Asian elephant related holidays. We see no reason this should not happen. Uh, there is colossal public support in the UK. We have no doubt it's uh, any different in the US and other countries, whether in the West or not. That we think is crucial because it's not right that small NGOs and others should be chasing across the globe, trying to blow the whistle on unethical activities when it is those who are really well placed financially making money out of these uh, uh, these uh, uh, incidents and, and these circumstances themselves to assume responsibility, including legal responsibility, the compulsion of law to replace reckless and chaotic self-regulation. And we're making good progress, and I expect to have a meeting shortly with our relevant at ministerial level, with our relevant government department, and we shall be reminding them of what the British people think. Um, uh, uh, there, are UK, there are UK tour companies and those pitching to the UK who are starting to change. And we believe that we have set things, you know, rolling pretty strongly now to change. We have other policies, and I can summarise them really briefly. One is um, for a, the, the UK and Indian governments to collaborate together to establish um, a model elephant sanctuary where um, elephants are looked after on ethical principles and where this stands as a beacon uh, to all others, including the travel industry, as to how you can frankly make money whilst being ethical. Secondly, um, a Mahout training centre. Uh, the Mahouts, as I mentioned, are those who daily manage the elephants and often in these days are very uh, ruthless and abusive. They too are, as it were, economically enslaved to the system. They are not well educated, they have little prospects, they have little money, and sadly, much is taken out on the poor captive elephants under their control. And thirdly, um, uh, exchange visits of the veterinary profession and student vets between uh, the UK and India. Uh, and th th this has happened to a small degree, but it could happen far more, where both sides benefit from realising that elephants with their extraordinary cognitive abilities don't need to be brutalised uh, and, and, and hounded to death in order to learn things. Um, elephants have served humankind for thousands of years in work and in war, and never before uh, was their subjection predicated on such brutality, nor is it necessary at all. But of course we say that elephants should wherever possible be in the wild, and where not, uh, then in genuine sanctuaries, and we define what those characteristics are very clearly on our website. Things like no uh, unnecessary direct contact with elephants and observing them at a respectful distance, exhibiting natural behavior in a herd setting, those sorts of things. So we have a number of policies and we are gathering numbers around us really fast and hard. And I know there's great work going on in the US uh, with some, uh, some bodies uh, uh, who align precisely with what we're trying to do. And we wish them really well and indeed a good deal of work in India and some of the other range states. But, you know, now it's a fight against time. Asian elephants numbers are barely 5% those of African elephants uh, and they're still uh, falling. And they will do, um, you, you know, unless there's a really big change. Um, and, and soon we'll lose them all together because as they get separated out, um, herd from herd, they can't interact their corridors are blocked and so on. They can't interbreed. They can't there, thereby maintain genetic strength. They can't therefore resist disease and, and, and infection and so on. And so they're very much prone to uh, not living their full span of life. Um, so all, all those things we're pushing extremely hard and, and we're so appreciative to the support we're getting in Britain and elsewhere, in the States and everywhere. Uh, we're, we're most grateful.
Yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds like the situation is dire, but there is hope. And, and it's good to know that people like you are, are helping to, to raise awareness and, and doing something to, to save these elephants. Um, so, Duncan, I'd like to thank you for talking with us today. We really love everything that you're doing. And um, we're going to continue to follow the Save the Elephants journey. Um, for everyone watching, please visit their website at stae.org. There's a petition there. Please sign it to help save the elephants. Um, and also visit them on Facebook at Save the Asian Elephants or on Instagram and Twitter at stay underscore elephants. Thank you for checking out the latest episode of the Activist in Action interview series. And be sure to check out the other videos in our series and stay tuned for future episodes. For more information on our work, please visit ladyfreethinker.org or you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Lady Freethinker. Thanks for watching.